Greetings, button mashers! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! Now, as I've mentioned before, this world can be a dull and thoroughly unlivening place. And while it's nice to have a realm of fantasy to escape to, actually living there, instead of here in the real world, can be rather dangerous. As is perfectly demonstrated in today's subject, Coraline. Released in 2009, and based upon the novel of the same name, Coraline tells the tale of a young girl's discovery of the other world, and its many, many temptations. But this seeming paradise exerts a heavy toll. This movie adaptation adds an extra character, and was shown in cinemas in 3D. But I'll be sticking with the 2D version for now. So grab a box of Cocoa Beetles as we take a look at Coraline. Meet Coraline Jones. And remember, that's Coraline, not Caroline. This joke gets repeated several times, so don't worry if you missed it the first time. And Wyborn Wybie Lovett, the landlady's grandson. Coraline has very busy parents. In an effort to get some peace, Father tasks Coraline with exploring the house. But there's one more door she hasn't tried. Coraline asks one final favour of her mother, and behind the door we discover... a brick wall. What a flipping anticlimax! That night, Coraline follows a stray mouse through the littlest door and into another world. This is the other mother. She seems to be perfect, but her eyes are buttons. But the next morning, Coraline wakes up in her own bed. We're then introduced to the other residents of the Pink Palace Apartments, who are all naturally oddballs. And Wybie shows up with an important plot point. Wybie's never been inside the Pink Palace, because his grandma believes it to be haunted. Grandma lost her sister here many years ago. And come the night, Coraline returns to the other world. But come the dawn, reality beckons once more. After a disappointment shopping for school clothes, Coraline begins to show withdrawal of the other world. Which I can sympathise with, but can be very dangerous. In the other world, we meet a mysterious cat. Coraline is offered the chance to remain in the other world. But in order to do so, she must sew buttons in her eyes. Coraline is predictably freaked out by this, and attempts to escape through sleep. But not this time. No, this time the truth will out, as Coraline takes a walk with the mysterious black cat. Back at the house, other mother tries again to convince Coraline. But Coraline is having none of it, and the terrifying truth of the other mother is revealed, along with the beast's true name. The creature is in fact a Beldam. And really, that's all the information that I've got. Well, if it has a name, we can kill it. Firstly, though, Coraline must escape the other world, which she manages with other YB's help. But where is everyone? And then... Wybie shows up with another important plot point. Wybie gave a doll to Coraline, a stunning likeness. But Wybie stole that doll, and it may once have been a likeness of his grandma's missing sister, who was one of the three souls that the Beldam already has trapped. Oh, gentle viewer, do you get the feeling that poor Wybie's been shoehorned into the plot to make it all tie together? And speaking of trapped souls, Coraline's missing parents are glimpsed in the mirror. And so Coraline ventures back into the Beldam's lair, without a plan, without a hope. The Black Cat suggests the game, which leads Coraline to find the Lost Eyes. And now, for live coverage of the Finders games, we hand over to our commentator, Brian Monkfish. The first round is a walk in the garden, while in the second, things get much stickier. Things look grim in the third round. 
They can't do that! Where's the referee? Foul! Foul, I tells ya! But nobody said anything about outside interference! Oh, right. Well, never mind then. With the eyes found, there's still the little matter of Caroline's parents. A subtle deception leaves the exit wide open, and a last-minute feline fumble gives Coraline all the chance she needs. Thanks, Brian. Brian Monkfish, everybody. Now, on with the show. And after a slightly shambolic escape... Coraline and her parents return to normal. And that's it, isn't it? Actually, not quite. The danger may have passed for the ghost children, but Coraline still has one last trial to face. The Beldam managed to get a hand into our world, and makes one final desperate play for the key. But YB comes to reinforce our heroine, and send the key, hand, and a large rock for good measure, down to the bottom of a very deep hole. And so our movie ends with the denizens of the Pink Palace planting a real garden. So that was Coraline. And I can honestly say without a shadow of a doubt that this is the finest movie that I just can't put into the House of Love. On the surface, it would seem to be perfect. Triple A cast, safe bet director, adapted from the claim novella, and for the most part, it works. Don't misunderstand, this is a fine movie. But the pacing is entirely uneven. The plot takes an age to kick in, spends a goodly portion of the first hour showing us this wondrous world, only to break it apart again in the climax. And the endless repeat of the Coraline Caroline joke breaks very quickly. But the characters are snappy, and the Beldum is a terrifying beast, proving that you can break the noblest spirit with the suggestion of love. But the tonal shift is just too jarring for my tastes. Still, it's a great film, and definitely worth your time. Just remember to never entirely trust buttons. So thanks for watching, and join me next week as we bring this series to a close. See you there!